It's Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi, everybody. And we're looking at Flash, G.I. Joe's laser rifle trooper, Flash. Uh, and if you caught my last video, uh, we started coloring uh, Flash. We did uh, some of the special effects on him. Uh, for example, the the burst, the blast effect background. I started doing that in the last video and I have since uh, finished it pretty much almost all the way around. I have a little bit of uh, ground on the floor there at, at Flash's feet, uh, which I'll uh, take care of maybe in this video. Uh, and I also did, I did the, the laser gun and I'm, I'm gonna go back into that and do a little bit more to it. Uh, but I also did this uh, padding on his uh, on his uniform. So uh, there's still some more left to do on Flash, so I thought I would do that in this video. And one of the first things I wanna do, uh, since I said I wanted to do a little bit more on the gun, I'm gonna use uh, my Copic marker Y11. This is pale yellow. This is the lightest yellow I have. And I'm gonna do that and use use this to kind of heat up the top side of the gun and this will this will give the impression that the gun is reflecting some of that yellow glow behind it so if you notice the underside of the gun has uh i i touched it up with a little bit of my lightest blue my b double zero frost blue and I went in there and I gave this some cool reflected light. So the top side, which is catching some more direct light, that is getting um, warm direct light. So cool light at the bottom and warm light towards the top. And that just, just makes the gun seem a little bit more three-dimensional and more interesting to look at. And it'll, the, the yellow in there will pop more. Okay, so we also have, uh, we have Flash's backpack, which is really, I'm not gonna get too fancy with it, just giving, just making it a few different shades of gray. And I don't want it to pop out, so I'm gonna make it kind of a dark gray. And then some of the other stuff on it will be a lighter gray. I also want to go to this coiling that he has, this tube, which goes all the way around. And I'm going to hit up the underside with the dark gray. And maybe as it recedes behind him, it's going to get dark, dark. Uh, and that's my cool gray number five. My cool gray number seven is even darker, so I might use that here and here, here, just as a little bit of an accent, and maybe just thin it out here, 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 going around. And then my lighter, uh, my cool gray number three, which is even lighter, I'm gonna do that on this side. And I may leave a little bit of white, you may see a little bit of white there, uh, which gives it a little bit of a shine. And the underside, actually the underside there, I'll go in with my blue again and let that cool down. Let that cool down. Maybe on, over here, it'll be the cool light again. And there we go. And actually I could even go in with the yellow again a little bit and heat that up and heat things up on that side. Very subtle things, but they, they can make a difference. Now we have, uh, we have Flash, uh, actually, one thing I wanna get out of the way. We could see Flash's eyebrows, and Flash has always had kind of reddish brown hair, so I wanna stay consistent with that. Um, now, much of Flash's uniform, like a lot of those early Joes, is uh, green, shades of green. So I've got a few different greens, uh, and as always with Copics, and I know I've said this before, um, 
the more colors you have, although you could do a lot with just a few colors, but really the more colors you have, the more you could really do. So I've got a few gray greens, a few shades of green lined up to kind of to be able to do a little bit more. Now the green that I first started, this is what they call uh, it's YG99, which is a marine green, appropriately enough. Um, although Flash, I believe, was in the army. But I'm going to use this to go in and hit up all of the, the folds that I have. Anything that with a green I imagine to be a little bit darker, I'm going to touch that up with my, my dark green here, my marine, uh, marine green there move down to the leg i'm going to keep that kind of dark and certainly in this area It'll be dark dark and down this leg as well dark dark I mentioned before how um I, in the last video I, I made mention how flash was the very first my very first gi joe um and having grown up in the 1970s, I kind of missed the boat on the larger G.I. Joes, the, the original Joes who um, some of you may remember, or if you don't remember firsthand, you may, may be somewhat aware. The G.I. Joes used to be larger. I don't remember what the size was. I know my brother had a few of them. Um, the thing that I liked about them were the accessories. Um, it seemed like uh, they made a Joe for everything, um, and he always had great stuff, you know. Um, so I grew up in the late 70s, early 80s, and at that point, that was the heyday of action figures. That was really, you know, Star Wars had come out. And Star Wars action figures were, were probably the most popular toy going out there. And uh, they really changed the, the playing field for, for action figures. For, you know, you didn't have those 8-inch or 9-inch uh, Mego scale figures anymore. Everything was now 3 and 3 quarter inches. So that you could also have play sets and vehicles... And uh, G.I. Joe really capitalized on that. Um, and I, I remember, I remember being a kid. And I grew up in um, northern New Jersey, where actually I still live. And the place to go in northern New Jersey back then was in the Livingston Mall of Livingston, New Jersey. There was a, a store called the Superhero Shop. It was also called Heroes World. And if you read comics back then, you may have seen their ads running, especially in Marvel comics. I remember them a lot. Um, where they would offer, you know, they, they would advertise all this cool stuff that you could order from them. Um, it, a lot of Mego figures. Um, just a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, so that their, their store, their physical store was in the Livingston Mall, which fortunately enough was not too far from where I lived. Um, so the, the Livingston Mall wasn't my parents' first choice of mall. The Willowbrook Mall was closer to us. But if I cried enough, I could make them take me to the to the Livingston Mall. If they needed to go to the mall, I could make a scene to make them uh, say, "All right, we'll go to the the Livingston Mall," and then we could go to uh, the superhero shop. Most of us just called it Heroes World, which is, uh, I think, the name they were more better known by. Um, and if I, if I remember right, I think they were also a distributor of comics in the area. So um, I think some local comic shops uh, used to get their comics from them. Um, 
and that was that was really the very first comic shop that I was aware of as a kid that I that I would visit frequently um and that was great I mean to me a store devoted to comics that was that to me was like Disney World um and and you know I mean they had it all um back in those days you know they got every comic plus the the independent stuff that you didn't see and on uh on the newsstand and you know back then the newsstand was still was still viable for comics um it's hard to imagine that nowadays but you, you did have your option and actually the newsstand because uh comics comic shops had not taken off quite as as much as they would very soon after that um the newsstand was probably where most people got their comics um comic shops were just a little bit too rare still at the at that point so i remember be going one of my visits to heroes world and uh they had this display of new action figures of, of, of gi joes these three and three quarter inch figures and um you know this was the first wave of gi joe figures which if you're a gi joe fan a G.I. Joe historian, you know those were very simple figures. I, I, I'll be the first one to admit that. They were very simple figures. Um, they were all built on just about the same body. Uh, they had about three heads, maybe. Um, you know, the, the ones that deviated from that, that standard body would be the ones, you know, people remember uh, really well, like Snake Eyes, of course, who was all black. Same body, but all black. Scarlet, of course, being the only girl on the team, at least at that point. Um, but they were, you know, they were largely this, the same body, couple of a couple of heads that they swapped around uh, or, or would color differently, you know. The one head, they'd make them blonde or they'd make them brown-haired. Um... Flash, I, I, I don't know if it was the uh, the red padding on Flash or if it was the uh, just the laser gun, um, but Flash really, really called to me out, out of all of them. Um, he seemed like the most fun. Um, I mean, I always loved sci-fi, so I guess maybe the laser gun thing maybe might have gotten to me, might have uh, called to me. Um, but he was the one, he was the one I bought first. Uh, and then very quickly, my, my Joe team would grow. Uh, and I would just, you know, every time I went back there, I would keep adding a new member to the team. Um, but I was, I was, I was all about the original 13. Um, cause they were the ones that were most military-ish to me, um, you know, I, I draw an, an admittedly arbitrary line as to where G.I. Joe gets a little too fantastic for me. Uh, and I know it's it's a total personal call, but I like them mostly as, as a military unit that fights kind of a super terrorist group. So I'm, I've been here blending greens, getting uh, Flash's uniform down as I've been rambling. So I'm going to keep going. Um, but I hope you guys dug Flash and, and, you, and you dug my, my memories of Heroes World. Uh, and as always, let me know what you think. Let me know uh, who are your favorite G.I. Joes. Who would you like me to tackle? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and come back for the next video. I will see you guys then. And as always, keep drawing, everybody. Keep drawing.